Oops. Okay, here we go. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another stream. This is your boy, Thomas and PBS Program Breaker with another stream. And I know I should have done this a few weeks ago, but I had a lot going on. But, hey, I'm back with another stream. Uh, all right. So, um, today, it's just going to be a and a stream. Uh, I should have mentioned this earlier about the rules I'm going to put in the Q&A. And... Um, so the rules that are going to be in the Q and A is I don't want to say this, but one of the rules are one, absolutely no uh, asking about my personal information. Two, I'll be okay with I guess I'm okay with swearing. I mean it's okay. I don't mind swearing at all on my channel, but I won't. But I don't want to hear anything like the N word or something. Otherwise, I will block you from my channel or my stream. And three, um. <laughs> Well, I know it's probably the weakest to say this, but have fun, <laughs> guess. Yeah, let's start the stream, shall we? <sighs> it's been a while since I did my last stream. And yeah, as you guys saw my uh, last stream, which I I'm going to talk about later, which I'm going to explain later to maybe Movie Game 1198. I'm sure you saw this in my last comment. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to have to... Oh, Movie Game 1198 says... Hi Thomas, how is it going today? Oh, it's going good, Movie King Eleven Ninety Eight. Yeah, um, you you're welcome to join the stream if you want. I'm just gonna put this on mute because I don't want any surprise. I don't want to get surprised. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll just set it up here. All right. So. Uh, I'm going. To. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll let Jake. Mar oh, moving in when the eight says, "Good to hear." I'm wanting to join. Maybe let Jake Martin join too. Yeah, sure. He's free. He's welcome to join. And Plick Lover Two Thousand is also good to join. Anyone is free to join, okay? Okay. All right. There we go. So, um, I'm gonna be playing this game I've been doing last time. Now I'm sure the I'm sure you guys noticed this earlier. I'm sure you guys noticed like a few weeks ago I deleted my other Q and A stream I did from three weeks ago. Uh, the reason I deleted that was because um, <laughs> well I don't want to talk about it. It's too personal. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, it's because it was a <laughs> it was a big mess up. And let's hope that this whole stunt doesn't happen again. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to talk about this once Movie Game Lover 98 gets on the stream, about my latest post. Alright. Okay, still no sign. Um. Nope. All right, come on. All right, I'll just have to use my phone for this one because uh... yeah, just so you know, anyone else is welcome to join. And also, uh, if you can't see the link or something, I'll set it up here. All right, okay. So we're gonna be playing this game, which I'm hoping I don't get copyrighted or anything like that. Come on, load. Nope. All right. 
So, um, we want to see, yeah, so yeah, once again, anyone else is free to join the stream, by the way, if you all want to, if you can manage, that will be great, if not, well, that's okay, guess I can understand. Still no sign yet. I'm sure it'll take some time. Oh dear, we'll have to play a different game. Ah, here, we can play Moto X3M, the winter version. Yeah, I had my volume down just in case <laughs> on all my devices because, you know, I don't want to get copyrighted. And if you guys are going to ask me, uh, I do like Thomas and Friends the most, but I also like Bob the Builder too because I feel like it's a bit underrated in my opinion. I mean, not a lot of people seem to care about it. I mean, they care about Thomas and Friends the most, but hey, I still think Bob the Builder is enjoyable. But I think, but yeah, I think other shows such as Bob the Builder deserve love because, you know, they're at least better, because Bob the, like Thomas and Friends, Bob the Builder is at least better quality. Okay. Still no sign. Hey, movie game ninety eight. Are you gonna join the stream or something? So we're going to wait for Movie Game Lover 98 to join the stream and hopefully I don't want to have to restart my stream over again cuz I know Movie Game Lover 98's done something like that before. And don't worry, it's just something outside. Um Shoot. Ooh. Almost, almost weird, but even so, it's no big deal. I mean, it's just only on my channel. There. There's still no sign. I'm sure he'll join in a second. Yeah. Um. So I was trying to talk to Movie Gamer ninety eight earlier. I meant to talk about this Bob the Builder episode. So if anyone has Scrambler to the Rescue two thousand seven release of Bob the Builder. Of course, it's a Project Build-It release, but 
Believe it or not, Scrambler to the Rescue is a special, I believe, from, I don't know, maybe season 15 or 16. And, and there are two season 11 episodes that feature, like, I know one of them is Scrambler in the Col Colorful Caves. And there's another Scrambler episode I can't remember it's called, but... It was Scrambler in the Colorful Caves and another, and there's like another episode involving Scrambler. But those two episodes I know for a fact are redubbed by Mark Silk. Originally they were recorded by Greg Props in 2005, but in 2007 they were re-recorded by Greg, by Mark Silk. Oh, Movie King 98's here. Hey, what's up? Great. Hello? Great, yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I thought you couldn't join. Um, so you saw my latest post? No. Earlier. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. I've seen it, yeah. Oh, you did? Okay, well, yeah. I didn't want to say this, but I have to do All Engines Go. And you know why? <sighs> why? April Fools. <laughs> okay, I know it was just a joke. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just that. April Fools, man. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> you know, I did something like this. But, like, you know, I just did some videos to joke people saying I'm doing this, these videos again. But I, no, I just literally did a way to play them backwards. That's what yeah. I do in... On April Fool's Day in October, because like, like I'm joking, I'm I'm doing this video game, but I, I was like April Fool's, I'm doing a different version of that video. Yeah, <laughs> I got but you. Yeah. Pretty, did I get you pretty good? <laughs> you surely did. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> I hope Jake Martin didn't know about my April Fool's prank. <laughs> I know it's just a joke. Yeah, and you know I'm probably gonna have to do this. Oh, and don't worry, I'm not going to do the same for Bob the Builder either. Okay. Yeah, when I do my fan-made Bob the Builder releases, I'm never going to include the releases from the ones from the reboot, okay? Okay. But I will do ones from Ready Steady Build, because at least that's canon to the original show. Sure, maybe it's a bit like seasons 13 to 16 of Thomas and Friends in a way, but at least it feels like Bob to me, because they still keep using the original material and all, like I said before in your stream. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, and also, I might if I ask you this, Thomas and Peace Program Breaker, which... Yeah, yeah sure. I'm not, I'm, but this time it's going to be a different order. I'll just say this in a different order. Which version of James and the Trouble with Trees do you find funny? Like when, when James laughs at Henry, if you can't push cars properly, Henry, why not talk to a tree instead? I think Which the Michael you... I think the UK version with Michael Angelus. I mean it's pretty funny. He was like, if you can't push trucks properly, Henry, why not talk to a tree instead? He teased. You know, you know how much you like the forest. As a matter of fact, bossy boy, the thought controller is expecting the island for trees that are too close to the line. He's worried they might cause trouble. Ha! Laughed James. If I came up on a tree, I would just push it aside. Really? Henry replied. And I'll do Baldwin if you don't mind. Sure. I'm not good with. Well, I'm familiar with Baldwin's, but I'm used to Angelus's. I mean, oh, I I'll just sort of enjoy Angelus as though at times. Go yeah, ahead. I'll just okay. If you can't push truck cars, no. If you can't push cars properly, Henry, why not talk to a tree instead? You know how much you like the forest. As a matter of fact, bossy boiler, Sir Topham has expected the island for trees that are too close to the line. He's worried they might cause trouble. Pa! Laughed James. If I came upon a tree, I would just push it aside. Really. Henry replied. Yeah. And also, um... Yeah. Yeah, I do like the UK version, because I think it's funnier, in my opinion. Yeah. 
Anyways, what what was another thing you were gonna ask me? Also, I'm it... just gonna say that. Did yeah. you? And I was gonna say, do you think which? Even though some people don't, do you? I know you and I both don't like Caillou, right? Uh, although I think Caillou is okay, but at the same time, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see like the first season is still terrible, and but it gets better every season. Yeah, season two was okay, I would say. I mean, there were. It's rare that Caillou and Rosie would probably cry in that season because I think there was like one particular episode of season two where Caillou did th throw a tantrum in that one episode from season two. Yeah, and for some reason, I thought Caillou was produced by Hidden Entertainment, but I was wrong. <laughs> no, no, it's the Sonar people who also made Arthur and Between the Lions. No, they didn't do Between the Lions. Well, no, the, I mean, Sonar was the ones who did Arthur. And I think also The Busy World of Bertrand Scary, which I think came out in 1996. I think so. <sighs> yeah. Also, by the way... <laughs> Do you know any good impressions from Bob the Builder or something? I think I know this one episode where they... Yes, I know from this one impression, like, when they do the Bob and the Sliding Doors segment from, like, the when it aired with the Project Build series on PBS Kids all the time. Well, it's just PBS Kids in general, just not Sprout. Yeah. Like, I know this one segment where... Uh... I, can you know what confused me as a kid? I thought, like, Bob said to Dizzy, can you spray some water? I, th or, I think he, he says that's to say mortar, don't you think? Yeah. In the first but, segment, like, don't you think it, it, it... I think he does pronounce mortar to Dizzy in the first segment of Bob and the Sliding Doors, but then the second portion, he asks for Dizzy... He tell, j tells Dizzy for another portion of mortar. Yeah. Though, though, which series would you recommend, though, if you wanted to watch Bob the Builder? Definitely the original, because I mean, I mean, the Project Build series is the second best, because you know at least it still keeps the original models, and despite it changes voices for Bob and Spud and Mr. Bentley and one Whoa. of the team. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like for example, Emma Tay voices Dizzy starting with season fifteen. Mark Silk voices Bob. I'm not sure who was the original actress for Dizzy. It was Maria Darling, for the U.S. at least. As for the U.K., it's Kate Harbour. Mm, I think both those ladies do good in real life. Emma Tate uh, was okay, but, I prefer, but not as good as Maria Darling. Yeah, and, and did you also know that, do you have the New Friends for Thomas and the Ventures DVD, or not yet? No, why? I mean, did you know that there's two, there's one... There's if you watch the Steamies vs. Diesels trailer that they show some scenes from like seasons six and seven. To yeah. Show... If you just look up the Steamies vs. Diesels trailer on. on yeah. Uh... If you thought it was going to be a classic older Thomas and Friends release, it's actually a all aboard with the Steam Team release. I would say. Yeah. I like I, to call was... seasons. You know, I like to call seasons eight through twelve all aboard the Steam Team. Yeah. It's. It's what it's a not to be confused with the UK release that has all season eight episodes on a UK release that released. Yeah, uh, but the only reason I thought I'd call it that is because you know, I used to think it was okay calling seasons eight through twelve the hit era, while calling seasons, um, seasons thirteen to twelve, seasons thirteen to sixteen the the Sharon Miller era and season seventeen to twenty one the Andrew Brenner era. But to be honest, after watching Brob the Builder when they have, like, a name for the series. I think now I like it calling it a different series, you know? Yeah, I can see why. And, and like, did you know, like, did you know that there's one scene from Thomas Bruce this week on the Steam Thomas Steamies vs. Diesel's VHS and DVD trailer that's on the New Friends for Thomas DVD? There's only one scene from Thomas Bruce in the squeak when Percy, there's a scene of Percy, but this is, like, when Tom, Tom, Percy says, thanks, Thomas, but where's your mouse? Yeah, I think the only reason they used season six to seven, you know, for the models was because of season eight. Yeah, I can see that. But did you know that we got the season eight of Thomas on DVD in the U.S. before the U.K. did? Yeah, it was actually pretty nice, and it aired before. P and it was 
and it wasn't before like and it wasn't like until september 2004 when thomas friends first broadcast on pbs kids i i don't think shiny time station counts because i'm pretty sure it was on the ptv yeah because that was because the only way to see thomas on re regular pbs before pbs kids changed well, it was before it was changed to PBS Kids in 1999, the same year as Dragon Tales. Was Shining to... Time Station. Yeah, to see Thomas on American TV in the United States. But I know there was the Fox Family Channel. I don't know if you had that, if your family had that channel back in the day. Do you guys have Fox Family no. Channel back then? No, I don't think we did. And you know okay, I then. wasn't born until 2005, right? I know, but I was just saying, like, was it just... I, I don't think it, you or your sisters or any of your siblings were born around the time they put Thomas on Fox Family Channel in the United States. In what year? I think it was 1999 through 2000, and then first on in the year 2000 they showed more of Shine. They showed reruns of Shine Time Station until Magic Railroad came out in theaters. So that was really the only way to see Thomas on Nick Jr. Really in the U.S. in the earlier days was but with Shine Time Station still. Yeah, and as far as I know, um, I think there were so many Project Build It shorts, such as Scoop and the Worms. Originally, it was recorded by William Durfus. Originally, uh, Sonia Letty, who voices Lofty in the original series, and originally was recorded by William Durfus as Bob and Sonia Letty as Lofty. You know, Sonia Letty? Huh? Yeah, Sonia Letty, who voiced Lofty in the original series before being replaced with Emma Tate. I mean, she did an amazing blast as Lofty himself, I should Ooh, say. Even Sonya? Though, yeah, I'm saying Sonya's an actress, but Lofty's still considered guy. Yeah. I mean, I think it's probably... I thought Sonya was perfect for the character. Well, at least for the U.S. And then we got Emma Tate, which she's okay, but I feel like she made Lofty sound way too kiddish. Yeah, and did you know that there's there's one actually season seven episode of Thomas I didn't find too bad with Michael Brand's narration, but with the Robert Hartshorn score music. Uh huh. They say the Runaway Elephant is the the Runaway Elephant music is is almost as with the Robert Hartshorn score is almost as epic as Mike and Junior's version. Yeah, it was actually pretty good. I thought it was pretty catchy. Like with the instruments and everything, like the, like the oh the, the Runaway Elephant. Scene? Yeah, the one where. Yeah, like the one where the, they recomposed with Mike and... No, with Robert Hartshorn's score music, but they used Michael yeah. Brandon's narration. Or yeah. you can find a... Or Michelangelo's version, but I think the Brandon one isn't too bad. Yeah. But you know I what's... Mean, the one that from Mike and Jr. was the best, but I think the Robert Hartshorn one was pretty good. Although, to be honest, none of the season seven episodes should have been recorded by... Shouldn't have been composed by Robert Hartshorn, unless if they aired on PBS, Okay. Or yeah, something. yeah, that's the rule, okay? Yeah. You can't... Huh? What were you saying? If, Go and say your thing. So, what I'm saying is, if the season 7 or 6 episode aired on PBS Kids, along with either seasons 8 to 10, or just seasons 8 to 9 in general, mm -hmm. then you have to use Michael Brandon's narration with the original Mike and Junior music. Not the Robert Harnshorn version, okay? Yeah, and, and did you know that also, like, did you know what, another thing that bothered me in The Runaway Elephant is that why couldn't Sir Tom Hatt just tell Duncan in the first place, you have to wait for a break fan as well, when he told him to collect the elephant? Wouldn't that have been much better after, instead of letting the the foreman say you must wait for the break fan in The Runaway Elephant? Yeah. I mean, it didn't bother me or anything like that. And, I know um, you... I know you don't have Really Brave Vengeance of Thomas on DVD yet. Oh, Thomas and the Really Brave Vengeance? Yeah, that's where the Runaway Elephant is shown on. Yeah. I don't think it was seen on any other releases. Yeah. Also, um... Mm -hmm. What else? So, originally, like I was saying before, there was one short... There was one short of Bob the Builder called Scoop and the Worms. Originally in 2004, it was recorded by William... Bob was voiced by William Durfus, and Lofty was voiced by Sonia Letty, which, like I said before, Sonia was perfect for the character, in my opinion. Yeah, I wish she could have stayed... 
to voice the him the lofty character himself in Project Build It, but but, but no, they had to change it to Emma Tate. What do you think of her? A bit. It's it was okay as lofty, but I think the original Sonya's lofty is much better. Yeah, and Liz, and then we got Lizzie Waterworth. Um. What about Lizzie yeah. Waterworth? Uh, oh, well, that one wasn't actually too bad. But once again, I think Sonya was pretty good. Was the best. <laughs> <clears throat> you know when... You know in the episode Clock Tower Bob, which is seen on the To the Rescue 2001 release? <laughs> you know when I, Lofty I screams seen, because of a bat? Oh my god. It's, it's just a... Even though bats aren't that scary, even though it's... It, I know you've what not you seen... Expect? Lofty is usually a scaredy cat, okay? Most of the time. I mean, that's his character. I can see that why. But have you yeah. seen the show... But... Uh, have you seen the well... show called Malcolm in the Middle? No. Okay, I think there's one episode where they had to deal with bats in their house. That episode... I don't think it scared me, but I was just like, huh, where'd those bats come from? Yeah. Also, did you know that there's this band episode... There was a band Bob the Builder Project Build It episode. Oh, there was? Yeah, there was one from season 12 called Travis and the Tropical Fruits. Apparently, that episode was banned on, was pulled off PBS airings. Well, well, it never aired on PBS to begin with, but it was seen on can Canadian airings. Travis and the Tropical Fruits. I've never seen that. I'll have to watch the Canadian dub of well it's the english dub but i think it's only can be see seen through canadian television but it was never seen on pbs mainly because of the because of the scene with the horse poop i didn't want to say uh, okay i think that just some of something disgusting that didn't kids shouldn't be affected by yeah i mean come on why couldn't yeah yeah and because of this scoop the teacher wasn't all wasn't seen on PBS airing as well cuz they didn't know an episode they didn't know what episode to pair it with Yeah, if I get a, if I watch that episode the tropical fruits with Travis, I think I'll have to I think I might say I may not like that episode cuz it's just it's cuz I think it might have been banned in cuz it like I said it was banned in North America just cuz of some, something gross. But, but 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 yeah, did you also know that when I watched another episode of Shine Time Station besides Bully for Mr. Conductor, where that's that one's better than Bully for You of Dragon Tales. Oh no, not that again. What is it? Well, I think there's this one episode I remember watching where it has the Tom. Sometimes Shine Time Station episodes will have two Tom's episodes, and sometimes they'll just have one. Yeah. Because I know, because I know, Bully for Mr. Conductor. You said in one of Flicka's streams. Remember, you said yes. It does include the episode Bulgy. Yes. Yeah, and apparently, I think the George Carlin narration of The Runaway wasn't seen on Shining Time Station. Only the Ringo Starr U.S. narration was used. But yeah, but did you also know that, have you seen the episode Crackpot of Season 2 of Shining Time Station where... Does it feature the early Season 3 episodes? It does feature some, like the early ones from 1991, That's like the first 16. Uh-huh. Yeah, it does feature one of them is Henry's Force, but the other one earlier was was Wooly Bear. So Wooly Bear and Henry's Force were the two on Crackpot. Like you know when Kara accidentally, like she still got in trouble when she dropped Stacy's teapot, even though she was told not to touch it, and then she just didn't, and she was just she just rounded it off, and then she just touched it, and then even though it would have been funny if Schemer got told off because she st he startled Kara, like when he and he made her drop it. Yeah, yeah. I don't watch Shining Time Station. To be honest, I never watched it before, but I heard of it. I did see yeah, it on you... YouTube, uh, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least you could see the episodes on YouTube, yes. But they have George Carlin of Ringo Starr. Yeah, Ringo Starr's U.S. narration. Yeah, but even though the, in the Christmas special it is a gift, the, they for some reason still use the U.K. version of Toss Missing Christmas Tree in the finale of Ringo Starr. Except they censored the fat controller and all that stuff. Even though they could have just said that, wouldn't it be cool if they just just said these words? Sir Tom Hat wanted this year's Carol Party to be an extra special celebration. After the narrator said all the engines were busy with the final preparations, yeah, and yeah. still said 
all the yeah i don't know why they did that all, but all the other ones they did the u.s version really well yeah anyways what i was trying to say about the what was i trying to say so i was talking about scoop the teacher from season 12 of bob the builder mm -hmm. well project builder while i enjoy that series to be honest it does have a few episodes i probably didn't like i don't know which ones i hated but i think sir muck sir muck was all right but to be honest muck and muck and spud were really silly in that episode but Oh my god. I don't consider it I don't consider it terrible, but to be honest, Sir Muck basically reminds me of one of the season ten episodes of Thomas and Friends. I can't remember. But yeah, season twelve I feel like reminds me my reminds me of season ten where all the characters act like idiots and have zero common sense. Like I know for example, some people say that Big Strong Henry is one of the worst hit no, the one of the worst model series Henry episodes, along with Henry and the Wishing Tree. Yeah, even though I'm sure Big Strong Henry was actually okay. Because even when Henry did make a mistake, even though he tried to stop, I don't know why he can just derail, on, like when he goes off the track and there's a section on the other track below. I don't know how he can derail like that, honestly. He could have just braked or something. Wouldn't it be cool if he just braked or something when the cars were pushing him? Yeah. Not to mention, uh... Not to mention, could I do my impression again, you know, from, from what I did yesterday? Which, oh, the impression? Sure. Yeah, yeah. You're, it's from the season 12 episode of Bob the Builder, Slow Down Scrambler. Okay. It goes like this. You were right, Dizzy. Speed isn't important. I just made a big mess of things. And you should really have come and gotten me when Dizzy got stuck, Scrambler. I know. Oh, I'm really, really sorry, Dizzy. Hmm. Oh, um, what about the cement, Bob? Well, once I fetched more from the yard, and... Ed made the mold on this side of the river, and waited for the abutments to set. Oh, um, the bridge is not going to be... The bridge is not going to be done today, is it? No, Lofty. I don't think so. Oh, man. Ah, well. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you ever watch Travis and Scoop's Race Day from Season 1 of Bob the Builder? I, I think I've heard the episode, but I just never had a chance to watch it because, like I said, I, I rarely... I I, I don't know why I watched Little Bob the Builders, okay, but for some reason I need to go back and watch all the episodes. Yeah, Little? Yeah. Well, to yeah. be honest, yeah, Travis and Scoop's Race Day is another great episode, but to be honest, I hate how in the UK version, Spud says stupid and all that stuff when... I mean, I get it's supposed to be better quality show, but that doesn't automatically mean you have to say bad minor words for little kids. Yeah, I think, like, also, like, you know how I can do all these versions from this Thomas episode with all three narrators from, like, when Michael Brand redubbed it on PBS Kids and Alec Baldwin originally narrated it and the Michelangelo's version in the UK version? I think there's another one I can do. I what think the version it? when James and the Red Balloon, like, when they, like, first I'll do the Michelangelo's original music by Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell. What yeah, it is, is different. That? Yeah, it's just... Because, like, you know how in the revised version he makes James sound kind of annoying, but in the original version, kind of good? Yeah. Like the, I don't the original, mind like, James it, sounding annoying, though. I don't mind. I mean, it might sound weird. But, like, in the original Mike and Jr. music version, he goes, What is that, Hot James? A hot air balloon, said Thomas. It will take holidaymakers on rides around the island. Take Taking the Oh, sorry. Sorry. Taking the holidaymakers on rides around the island is our job, waste James jealously. Then, as if by magic, the hot air balloon rose silently up into the sky. What if the hot air balloon takes our passengers away? What will happen to us then? <sighs> okay, now let's try the revised Angelus version. What Wait. is that? Huh? 
Oh, you were doing the. Oh, sorry. I'll do the. Yeah. Okay. What is that? Oh, James. A hot air balloon, said Thomas. It will take holiday makers around the our, our island. Taking holiday makers around our island is our job, wished James jealously. Then, as if by magic, the hot air balloon rose into the air. What will happen? What if the holiday, what if the balloon takes our passengers away? Tough James. What will happen to us then? Okay, now I'm going to do the Baldwin U.S. version where it goes, what is that? Oh, James. A hot air balloon, said Thomas. It will take vacationers on rides around the island. Taking vacationers on rides around the island is our job. Reach James jealously. Then, as if by magic, the hot air balloon rose silently up into the sky. What if the hot air balloon takes our passengers away? Huff James. What will happen to us then? Yeah. I think I think I can try the Brandon version. Yeah. I mean, at least Brandon gives Donald and Douglas Scottish accents in that one. Yeah, actually, like, well, let we, let's see, might we do that scene with Donald and Douglas, but I'll do Baldwin's and you do Brandon's. Yeah. I'll, first I'll do, what, it's a floating basket with folks in it, said Donald. Whatever will we dream up next, said Douglas. All right. Well, it's a floating basket with folk in it, said Donald. What the hell will they do next, said Douglas. I mean, as yeah. much as and as much as Brandon's narration is annoying, at least he does give Donald and Douglas Scottish accents. Yeah, and of course, like this one scene where Duck bumped into the back of Stepney. Stepney. Yeah, and you know what? I, you know what I find weird. Mm -hmm. So James in a Red Balloon, which is a 2003 release, it's gonna be 20 years old. Yeah, this summer it will be the the release. Percy Chocolate yeah. Garage just turned 20 this February. Yeah, and that's when Alec Baldwin's narration got worse in two thousand three. Well, yeah, it's been twenty. Yeah, it's been twenty years since that. Yeah. That's been going on. His narration's been boring mm -hmm. in season six. Yeah, you know, I feel like since two thousand nineteen, when I started high school, I sounded annoying. Like I sounded like Alec Baldwin from season five. <laughs> oh wow! But now nowadays, I'm starting to sound like Baldwin from season six. But you know, the last twenty episodes. Yeah, but and yeah, it's also like, what if we tried to do this? What if we also tried the portion? Maybe we tried this version from Edward the Really's Engine or AK Edward the Various Flange in the UK, where the trucks fake fun of Duck in all narrations. The yeah. Michael yeah. Angelus original music with Mike and Junior and I can the do the, UK. the one where they sing ducks should play with other ducks and all that. Yeah, um, I can do that. Okay, is it going to be the original Mike and Junior music or the revised Michelangelo's version? Both. I'll do both. Okay, I'll do the re. I'll do the oh. original one. Okay. Ducks should play with all the trucks, so he's no use to pull the trucks. Quack, quack, quack! Hold back, hold back. Okay. Okay. Right. Now I'll do Alec Baldwin. Ducks should play with other ducks because he's no good at pulling trucks. Quack, 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 quack. Hold back, hold back, they giggled. Let me see if I can do Brandon's, actually. Yeah, but remember, his narration is really annoying. Ducks should play with other ducks because he's no good at pulling trucks. Quack, 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 quack. Hold back, hold back, they giggled. Yeah. And what about, um, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can I tell you something? You know when Alan Myriad voices Spud? No, no, no. No, I'm talking about Travis. Sorry. Yeah? Yeah. You know when Alan Myriad voices Spud? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not only did he voice Spud, he also voiced Travis at the time alongside Scoop and... And who's another character? Like, this oh, is for the and Mr. Bentley. Okay. All those were voiced by Alan Marriott until they made Rob Rackstraw voice them in Project Build It series. Well, mostly... except for Scoop. Huh? We'll just fix up for Scoop. Scoop and Travis were voiced by Alan Marriott throughout the series. Well, until maybe the start of Ready, Steady, Build, where David Menken voices them. I mean, they were... I mean, he was okay with both of them, but not as good as... 
But to be honest, he's not as good as Alan Murray. Because I think Alan Murray will always be the best. <sighs> and, yeah, did you also know that you did the quote from the Bob the Builder episode when... What the what was the episode called when Bob told Scoop to stay out to what how many times do I have to tell you to please stay out of the road and it's dangerous? Who Scoop? No, what's the no Spud? No, I'm talking about the what's the episode called when it was when skateboard Bob, Spud from season five. Like when he told like when he Bob told Scoop yeah. to Scoop Spud uh, uh, our Spud I think Scoop Spud to stay out of the road isn't that the episode? Yeah, it was skateboard Spud from season five. Yeah, did you know that Skateboard Spud is one of the mini games you play on the Bob Built Park PC game? No, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> but you know, Skateboard Spud was pretty funny. Like, you know, I was like, like um, my impression, I'll do it again. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the UK version because I'm used to the US version. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll go with it, anyways. Spud. Are you okay? Uh, I think so. Yeah, Bob. Good. But you know you shouldn't have been playing the road, Spud. It's not allowed. It's dangerous. I know, Bob. Sorry, Bob. Help, Bob. I think it's stuck. I think maybe your feathery friend can help you. <laughs> that happened. Yeah, I... It was at the end of the episode, okay? Okay. And also, did you know that when I played this well, actually, no, I didn't play this game, but did you know that I watched this episode? Oh, you know the, the version um in the in the season eight version of Fish? Like, you know, when after the, the crash, after the crash is over and the fish and Thomas says, oops, sorry. And in in, from Angelus and Brandon, it goes different. Yeah, I think I like the Brandon one because it's kind of funny. <laughs> you know, like he's when, like, oops, said Thomas. Sorry. Never mind, Salty was covered in fish. Never mind me, Haughty. The fish reminds me of the sea. Wait, is that the UK version you were doing when he said... I'm doing the US version. Okay, well, I think he says the smell reminds me of the sea. Well, whatever. And I'll tell you when Sir Tom at Scolds Thomas in UK and US one. I think I'll do the... I, 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 don't I think can I do, do the, the UK. Huh? Yeah, you can do the UK one. I'll do the US one. Yeah. You have caused confusion and delay, said the fat controller sternly. You must learn to be more safe. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, Thomas puffed sadly. Okay. You have caused confusion and delay, said Sir Topham Hat. You must learn to be more safe. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Thomas puffed sadly. Yeah. You know, if I could think of maybe, if I could compare the characters from Bob the Builder to Thomas and Friends, like Scoop could be Thomas, and Bob, of course, can be Sir Topham Hat. Because, you know, he's a father figure after all. Yeah. What about Wendy? Maybe, maybe Dowager Hat? Or maybe, maybe Lady Hat? Or maybe Dowager Hat could. Yeah. And As for Muck, I would say James or something. And what if... Did you know that this one person, he did Perseus Spud instead of... Even though Diesel would have been a good choice for Spud, even though even though Spud is a, is a, likes to joke around and have fun. Yeah, I don't see why would you pick Spud when I think... When I think Diesel would be better, because, you know, I mean, even though Dizzy and, no, um, yeah. Um, so, what else? Oh, yeah, Hunter, oh, yeah, Hunter Arthur C. Wiggle says, I can't join today, dude. Oh, okay, I get it. Yet also like maybe if we do maybe if we do the scene from Rosie's Carvel special, aka Rosie's Fun for special in the UK, and I can I can think I can do maybe maybe we see I can do Angelus and you can do Brandon, like the part when Sir Tom at scolds Rosie. Yeah, I think, I think the first time Rosie gets in trouble. Hold on. It it's the only time. Yeah. Oh, he muted it. Hey, yeah, sorry. 
Um, hold on. I forgot to mention, by the way. You know when Alan no. Married voice voices Travis? Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention that Travis sounds a little bit like Travis's U.S. voice for <laughs> Alan Married's Travis voices sound similar to or from Dragon Tales. You know. I think it could. Yeah. It does sound a bit similar, though. But did you know that... Okay, now that... Can we try and do the partition from Rosie's Carmel Special, a.k.a. Rosie's Funfair Special in the UK, where Sir Tom Hat scolds Rosie? Yeah. Are, are they... I can try and do the both of them? I can try and maybe Angelus's. Okay, I know how it goes, because I watched James A. Williams' video on Season 12. Yeah, because I'm sure, you know, Season 12 is the most hated season. Well, one of the most hated seasons, I would say. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see if we can try it now. Um, yeah. The fuck controller was cross. I told you to be Emily's back engine. But, sir... I brought all the, I brought all the carnival specials. I brought the whole carnival train. And I wanted to make help with the children. I wanted to help Emily. You haven't helped anyone. You have caused confusion and delay. You left half the train. Now there won't be any carnival special. Okay, now I'll do Brandon's. I told you to be Emily's back engine. But I brought the carnival special all on my own, sir. I wanted to help Emily. You haven't helped anyone. You have caused confusion and delay. You left half the train. Now there be no carnival for the children. Yeah. To be honest, would you say that maybe that Sir Topham Hat would be the best? Would be the best character for Bob or something, since he's a father figure. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, if only someone else could join, but yeah. <sighs> yeah, and also, like, I think I'll... Yeah, I, I might as well just ask you this. Did you know that there's this one episode of Caillou that I remember hating back then as a kid? Because I still hate Caillou to this day. Uh-huh. Did you know there's this one episode where they do get a car wash... And Rosie kept crying like a, like a brat. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean this the... episode. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. It's not as bad as any other Caillou episode I hate, but it still has its major problems. Like I know, like this one that Rosie starts crying like a brat because you know, like they're trying to get a car wash, and even though it's because like that's what happens when you get a car. Because I know like th those things can be really scary, you know. Because I can understand why those things can be really noisy or they can be really scary, you know. Mm hmm But, yeah, I, and I don't know, I think, didn't you tell me before in, in the one stream, like, when we did a, when we did a previous version, remember you told me, like, that's, there's this one episode where Caillou didn't get his library card? Yeah, I think it was uh, Read All About It from Season 2. And then, like, he, like, it, it's like Caillou didn't get his card and then he starts crying and threw a fit. No, no, I don't think it was that one. I, I think it was... I think he cried because of the fact that he accidentally drawed, drawed... He was doing drawing, and he didn't know that... And he accidentally drew on the book. Like he drew inside the book by accident. Yeah. And he started crying. Ugh. I mean... Yeah. I mean, he's only four years old, but at the same time, they deserve better quality. But, and also, did you know that, yeah, I know there's an episode of Dragon Tales I need to ask you about. Have you seen this Dragon Tales episode where, you know, they have to, like, try, like, to, like, basically... Is well, it season three? Oh, wait, are you saying, like, you want me to explain a season three episode of Dragon Tales? Yeah, because that's the only season I got to watch. I think, okay, I guess I may as well tell you one. There's this one episode where they get up really early. Isn't, it, isn't there the episode where you watch where you like, wake up very early in the morning to see Bursting Blossoms? Called Rise and Bloom? Hmm. I think I watched that one. And also, um, 
while I'm not much of a big fan of Dragon Tales or something like that, but I could, but I do enjoy it in terms of writing. Yeah, and also, like, I know that there's this one episode. Yeah, and also, like, I can also do this. Like, you know how... Did you, and also, did you know that in the episode, you think it would be better if Thomas meets the Queen, aka Paintbots and Queens, was the finale of Season 4 instead of Mind That Bike? Yeah, I do agree. It, I think it would have been a much even better ending. Not to say Mind That Bike was bad. I mean, it was cool to see a new character such as Tom Tipper the Postman. Yeah, and uh, and you know George Carlin's, and you know, you know what would have been Carlin's last words if my, Thomas meets the Queen was the season finale? Oh, I think it goes like this: No engines worked harder than those on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. Yeah, I think I think I pref I think in my fan made release, I think I'll have Thomas meets the Queen be the finale. Well. If you're okay with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And I found, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm still getting over that April Fool joke I pulled over on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah, also, I know I'm going to tell you this, and uh, no, ask you this. I know you've watched Max and Ruby before, but you're probably not going to watch it anymore. Yeah, I find. Huh? Are you gonna probably never watch Max and Ruby again since I don't like it anymore? Um, I mean, I don't care much about Max and Ruby, but that doesn't mean I hate it. I'd say it's okay overall, not as good as one of the Nick Jr. shows because I like better Nick Jr. quality shows, such as like I remember when I was little, I used to watch the Fresh Beat Band when in two thousand twelve or two thousand thirteen, and. I think I remember I used to watch SpongeBob as well. I also used to watch The Fairly Odd Parents and all that stuff. Yeah. And I think I also used to watch Yo Gabba Gabba. I mean, I find Yo Gabba Gabba to be okay. Yeah, that was after my time, Yo Gabba Gabba. But didn't you know that there's this one episode of Blue Spoons I remember watching? Where, like, you know, you know that I like to, out of like, have you seen the Blue Spoons episode Cafe Blue from season two or three, I think? I think so. Why? But this, because you know, it's like when it's funny. Didn't she? Wouldn't it be better if Steve just said to all the friends, "I'm sorry, we're out of spaghetti sauce." But the, when they literally ordered spaghetti for lunch, but they said, "But Steve, wouldn't it be better if Steve just could have just told them, "I'm sorry, friends, we're out of spaghetti sauce. We cannot have, we don't have any stuff to make spaghetti. You'll have to get cheese sandwich instead." And then Mr. Salt, and Mrs. Pepper didn't have to freak out. Guess it was because of you know customers. Well, I mean, I know you're supposed to treat customers with respect, you know. But wouldn't it be better if Steve just said, I'm sorry, friends, we're out of sp spaghetti sauce to make spaghetti. You'll have to have cheese sandwich instead. Yeah. It's like, you know how in this one episode of Malcolm in the... No, 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 not Malcolm in the Middle. Did you know that there's this one episode... I Well, Fan made a, just a just a made-up episode where this these two go on a date, and they say they're out of tea, they'll just have lemonade to drink instead? Mm-hmm. And they just obeyed without throwing any fits because i know yeah. this is... see that's caillou you seen... done right but did you know that well i mean have you seen the blue Suits episode cafe blue i think so i i can't remember but i think so i watched it on youtube before having it on i've been on the blues room snack time play date dvd from 2004 yeah. not, not not the vhs separately cafe blue but even though i want to get cafe blue on vhs because it has the very first the season premiere of clues snack time yeah, what's your opinion on Blues Room? Like, you know, it's basically a spin-off series. I don't think it's really that good, in my opinion. I used to think it was cool, but now, just looking back at it, it's just not as good as the classic Blues Clues. Yeah, and Blues Clues and You is probably not as good either. I mean, at least it follows the original Blues Clues, almost. Because it still goes the same, the debut episode of is Snack Time. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I think it's okay, but, like, if I had to pick the best reboot, what reboots would you recommend watching? Definitely Blue's Clues and You, because I think it's, at least it's, there's some things that keep true to the original series. Yeah. I don't know any other reboots I could think of. Um, yeah. And, and also, did you know that, well, um, 
Did you know that there's, uh, there's one video I also watched of this other funny thing saying I'm banishing to the sh Shadow Realm, but they use Uno cards? Yeah, like Flip It and Sir Topham Hack is the one that goes to the Shadow Realm or something like that. Or Sir Handle goes to the Shadow Realm? Yeah, I'm banishing you to the Shadow Realm. Oh, like, I, it's Sir Tom. I said, I'm banishing you to the Shadow Realm. Wait, do I still say his no phrase? Yeah, are you good at that? Yeah, there's no! Much better. <laughs> but also, that's the right. I was talking about. I was talking about this Bob the Builder Project Builder short earlier called Scoop and the Worms. I was trying to explain that there's three different versions of the US dub of, the episode of that short. Oh, wow. And I think the same thing goes for Lofty and the Otters. Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah. So the first version is the one from originally, which was originally recorded in 2004. That version has William Durfus as the voice of Bob and Sonia Lette as the voice of Lofty, of course. Um, which, like I said before, Sonia is the best voice actor for the character, in my opinion. No doubt. Yeah. And then there's another version recorded in 2005 with Greg Props as the voice of Bob and Emma Tate voicing Lofty. Scoop is still voiced by Alan Marriott throughout the Throughout the stop motion series, throughout the stop motion era, and then there's a third version with Mark Silk as the voice of Bob, but Emma Tate still voices Lofty at the time. Yeah. I, also, did you know that there's this episode of Bob the Builder? Have you seen it? The one where Mucket is afraid of the dark and she's stuck in the tunnel. Oh, that was Mucket stuck from season one. It was seen on PBS airings, wasn't it? I think it was. I think I think it's on any Bob the Builder home media release, or you just find it on the internet. Yeah. I It was seen on a release. I think it was Building Yard Adventures 2004 release. I think you said Building Yard Adventures? Yeah, that's that's the release. I think it's... I think if you look at... Well, I don't know if you can look it up, but I think I'm off, but I'll take a look at it later. To see if that's true, because I mean, I'll have to watch the episode Muck gets stuck again, like where she's stuck yeah. in the tunnel. And oh, yes. Just... You want me to do my impression on how Muck gets stuck in the dark? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Hi, Muck. How you doing? Hey, look, there's no point in hanging out here. Come on, let's go. No, I, I can't. Don't be silly. Of course you can. I got a light. Just follow me. I can't. It, it, it's too dark. Oh, I see. What's up, Bob? Welp. She's stuck. Muck is stuck. You're right. She's friend of the dark. Oh, no. Just like Lofty's afraid of heights, too. <gasps> I got an idea. Yeah, that that's my impression. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty funny when... It was pretty funny when Bob was like, look, there's no point in hanging out here. Come on, let's go. <laughs> and then yeah. Muck refuses. <laughs> yeah, that's her character to me. Also, you know what I find lazy? What? You know, the one thing I find weird is it's unknown to what happened to Pilchard at the end of the episode. Apart from that she was in the tunnel. Apart from the fact that Pilchard was in the tunnel. And then Muck oh. ran away. Oh my god, I feel... So sorry that Pilcher got left behind. Hopefully they'll catch her before it was too late. Yeah. yeah. Although in the although in the season one episode Pilcher in the pickle, <laughs> which of course it's seen on the Pets in the Pickle release. Yep, which <laughs> I have. Yeah, of course you're gonna be able to watch the episode of how Pilcher ran away. Well, Pilcher never ran away, but there's been a slightly misunderstanding. Yeah, and also like I can tell the difference from this. Impression. My foot do the impressions in different dialogue in this episode of season. Oh, I don't know. Maybe season, season four of Thomas from the episode Rusty to the Rescue. Uh huh. From Angelus or Carlin when the Diesels call out, "Who are you?" Yeah, I think Carlin was the best or something. Our Angelus was sort of okay. Like I think, I think when he says, "When the Diesels call out," when they bell out, "Who are you?" 
Who are you? Rusty plucked up courage. I'm a shed since science inspection diesel. Have you any engines in the shed? No. None. Ross rallied again. Then what about the signings? You know, you know, in the first year when you start high school, you begin to sound normal. But, you know, like I said earlier, uh -huh. you know what I said earlier? Like, yeah. when you start high school, sometimes you sound like you have a lot more energy. But then all of a sudden, at the end of your high school year, you start to have low energy, just like Baldwin's narration in season six. I didn't know this that, but yeah. And also, like, but that's just me. Okay. That's okay. just me. Oh yeah, can I ask you? Oh, sorry. I also was gonna ask you, oh, so, ask you maybe we do the scene maybe we do the scene from by George, like you know, when Gordon notices the car on the on the line ahead, but it wouldn't move out of his way. You know how Baldwin screams out Gordon's get out of my way much more better than Angelus? Yeah. He was like, Get out of the way. But the freight car wouldn't budge until Gordon forced it. Say it, movie can learn ninety eight. By accident. <laughs> and also like when it says and also like when it goes Gordon was worried that Sir Topham had Ross. He was, but not with Gordon. Whoever caused this disturbance, I need to answer to. And he did, a few days later. Look who's here, said Thomas. George had been found out by Sir Topham Hatton and punished. He looked miserable. Now we can have some peace at last, said Hersey. I want to get rolling again, but I have a few but I have a week till I really think I can. And, and then then you'll be as rude as ever. Eh, George? Chuckled Thomas. And then the narrator and then Alec Baldwin breaks the fourth wall by saying, I hope not. Don't you? Yeah, like I said, I think, like I said, yes. Are you, are you, you're pretty sure correct, Rusty in the Bowler is the last time the narrator breaks the fourth wall and says, I hope the character's right, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the first time they say that was season three or season four. Well, well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because you don't count the U.S. re-narrations of seasons one and two. Yeah. I think, what was the first season three episode of Thomas where the narrator says, don't you? Hmm. I don't think it was in Gordon the Famous Visitor when the when a voice came around to Gordon says, I'm never trust. I'm pretty sure trust. the first time, um, yeah. I'm pretty sure the first time the narrator would break the fourth wall was season was the season one episode come out Henry or the sad story of Henry in the UK. Oh, by the way, um, also if you had to compare the if you had to compare all the the can do crew from Bob the Builder to the Steam Team of Thomas and Friends, how would you compare it in any way? Mm, I would have to compare them from. Because of Lofty being scared, I think I would have to compare him to Henry's character. Because you know how they both are, have something in common, they're both scared of stuff? That's yeah. not really... Yeah, even though Henry acts like... Even though Henry acts like an idiot in later seasons, though... <sighs> yeah, I think so. And I think Rolly could be suitable for Percy, maybe. Yeah. And Dizzy, maybe Rosie? Dizzy is R Rosie? Yeah. Because of how... Because I can tell, like, this one scene they use Ro Rosie to be Dizzy. Yeah. And Scoop, definitely Thomas. Okay, maybe he can be a bit bossy at times, but Thomas here, on the other hand, he is a leader. He's basically the leader of the Steam team. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you also know that in the... Oh, what the episode? Oh, yeah. Yes, for James Goes Buzz Buzz. Yeah. We can do the part from when James bustles in and asks, what's that duck? Are you afraid of bees? 
Yeah. I, 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 well, I'm pretty sure Angelus, it's, it's always his normal narration, but George Carlin, it's different. Yes. Yeah, I can do the UK narration. James Bustleton. What's that, dog? He snorted. Are you afraid of bees? They're only insects after all, so don't let that buzzbox diesel tell you the difference. His name is Boko, snapped Doc, and he didn't. We... I wouldn't care, interrupted James. That if hundreds were swarming around, I would just smoke... I would just blow smoke out them and tell them to buzz off. Buzz, 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 retorted Doc. <laughs> okay, this one I'll do, Carlin. What's that, Doc? Are you afraid of bees? Only insects after all, so don't let that buzz box diesel tell you different. His name is Boko, and he didn't. We, I wouldn't care if hundreds were swarming around. I just blow smoke and make them buzz off. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Retorted Duck. Yeah. And also, like, and, you know, and I forgot to mention, by the way, in season five, the UK narration has additional dial, has additional lines. You know, for example, in Cranky Bugs, you know, you know the scene where Cranky is 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 complaining to Thomas. Thomas and Percy that the cars are too far for him to load. He's like, like Thomas retorts to him by saying, "Rubbish," said Thomas. We always arrange our trucks like this, and no crane has ever complained before. But Baldwin, he doesn't. He doesn't even say that. Like, like what is it funny? Huh? It, I mean, Baldwin. Do, do, like, huh? do but, but add the additional, like add the additional dialogue. Both do Baldwin's narration. Yeah, go ahead. Rubbish, said Thomas. We always arrange our cars like this, and no crane has ever complained before. Well, I'm complaining now. And Cranky banged his low down on the key side. Yeah. And I know some people probably didn't like the Cranky Bugs episode because of Thomas and Percy being in trouble. Even though it was just one misunderstanding. I mean, come on. Yeah, I, I can understand that, you know. I mean... I've watched I guess Cranky, the, Bugs, Cranky Bugs the episode itself to death. Shouldn't that be Cranky's fault? Because he, he tricked Thomas and Percy to do these things. But even though he tried... Like, first time when he tried to do it, Percy, he, he dropped the load on Percy's face when he tried to load the cars onto Percy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Cranky plays a trick on Thomas. That should have been his... Him, both of them getting in trouble. All of them getting in trouble. Who, all? Wait, wouldn't it be cool if Sir Tom had did scold Thomas, Percy, and Cranky? Why? Because Cranky was the one who played it. The other one we did to Thomas, Cranky played a trick on him. Yeah, but I don't see why Thomas and Percy would get in trouble. But, I mean, think about it. I mean, Percy and Thomas get in trouble so many times in the classic series. Yeah, but I think they get into a lot more trouble starting with the All Aboard the Steam Team era. Well, like, for example... Well... Yeah. Oh, and I got something awesome to show you, by the way, Movie Game 1198. Yeah, Arthur... That's the Arthur stuff, yeah. Yeah, background. What do you think so far? Good. Yeah, they look great, eh? And you know, Flicklover two thousand did told me he's gonna use them soon, so I'm gonna, so I want to know how I'm gonna share it. So yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not finished yet, but I got pretty far. <laughs> this is like yeah. my revised version of how I would do it because you know some of the backgrounds were really unoriginal and sometimes they don't seem to match the tint, so I thought I'd change it up a bit. What do you I think? Yeah, oh, yeah. Shoot. shoot. And, and I, I I know there's... I don't think I have the, an Arthur release on DVD that does have the episode DW Beats All. Oh, DW Beats All is not on any Arthur release or anything like that. It can only be seen on television or watch it on YouTube. Well, it is seen on PBS airings as of right now. <laughs> Even though the show was rec recently finished. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, if I watch the Arthur finale all grown up, which I, I think season 25 was the best season of the show, you know? Not as good as the old seasons, but... Huh? Like, you've seen, like, the finale of Arthur all grown up? Yeah, and you know, I cried almost. Like, when the last few seconds where everyone's all adults now? Yeah. 
I but watched you know, it last year and I, yeah. And did you know that the it, I think did you know that the Arthur's younger sister Kate his baby sister Kate does not appear, but I think she grows into like a middle aged kid or something. Yeah. Though to be honest, like you know, seasons twenty two to twenty five of Arthur were produced in two thousand nineteen. You know that. Yeah. Oh no. What's going on? What's the matter? Oh, what's going on? There's a bug. A bug? Oh no! I know that's bothering me. I know I can see that. Yeah, I can okay. see what's. Well, I can't see because my camera's turned off. I can. I know you're. I can notice you're having a problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Maybe I need to try this on. All right, is it working? I you see my screen, so. hopefully. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's, good. It, that's good. Okay. Yeah, while it's popping up, I may as well ask you this. Did you know that there's another episode I remember watching of Shining Time Station? Or well, I'll just say Thomas, because I know I've both of us like Thomas, but you've not seen Shining Time Station. I know there's a Thomas episode where. Oh, how about the like in the episode Escape? Like you know, I can tell the Angelus or Carla narration, like when the yeah. when the jumps jump scare effect starts to play, and then this escape you say it's about to play. Yeah, and yeah, and like, how can they like tell you can tell Angelus or Carla in Scottish accent of Douglas? Because I think about it, like I think it I mean, doesn't it go like this in Angelus where he says that sounds like a steam engine. Oh, uh, let me do one. Let me do it. This sounds like a steam engine. He thought. The hiss came again. Who's there? Ox Douglas. A whisper came. Are oh, you the fire controller's engine? I am. Well, I'm Oliver, and I'm with my great man phone. We run out of coal and have no more steam. What? What are you doing here? Escaping. I think that's when the music popped up. Surprise. Okay. Like which, <laughs> like which one? Didn't the music scared you a bit? You know. No, no, I didn't get scared of the music. Like when it made that that jump scare start to. But I know Carlin's. It goes. That sounds like a steam engine. Thought the hiss came again. Who's yeah. there? asked Douglas. A whisper yeah. came. Are you Sir Top of Pat's engine? I am proud of it. Well, I'm Oliver, and I'm with my brake van told we run out of coal and have no more steam. But what are you doing? Escaping. From what? Scrap. Douglas shivered. Then he remembered Edward's story about saving Trevor. I'll be glad to help you. You'll have to look those if you're ready for scrapping on taking you away. Yeah. Okay. I think I got it to work, so let's see if... Okay, okay. There we go. I think it's working. Just hopefully I don't get that bug again. I'm just using the actual app instead of the your laptop, yeah. There we go. Let's hope it doesn't bug again. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed if you watched my I don't think you joined any of my streams where I showed family best of no, complete season box sets of Thomas. Yeah, but it would have been nicer if you made your own like I don't know. How, I don't know how to explain this, but I think it would have been even cooler if you like made your actual releases or something. I mean, I just explained the episode orders for discs one and two of each season because I'm not doing like it's. It. I don't think it would be fair if I just did seven episodes on each four discs, each of the four discs for seasons ten and twenty, because you know those seasons have twenty eight episodes. Split them off seven episodes on each four disc. Yeah. Even though it would have been convenient because, you know, season tw 20 has 28 episodes, it'd be easier to split them on four discs. Because, you know, like, tw more than 26, we just like to put them on X more discs. 
just to make it convenient. Yeah, and maybe there should have there should have been a season twenty five or something. Yes, where it still goes CGI still. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure some people say that the logging logos is still cringe. Well, even though know, did you did you know that the, the, in this one season eighteen episode for some reason some someone noticed that Ferdinand didn't make a cameo in, in the episode Signals Cross from season eighteen? Yeah. Yeah, it was really shocking. Even, even though, though season eighteen is the last season to feature Martin Sherman as Thompson Percy and Carrie Shell as her top and hat. And James, but he will still voice Gordon and Henry Carey Shale. Yeah, guess I can understand why for Carey Shale because you know he sounds a bit similar to Gordon. Yeah, but and also like, did you know that? Well, isn't it funny that even though I don't like this episode the way she does it of season twenty, isn't it cool that Thomas with his Joseph May voice mentioned to Daisy if if she's going to Misty Island? Yeah. It was shocking. And like, and we never even saw, like, and also like, even though for some reason in the first two seasons of the Brenner, CGI Brenner era, for some reason, Thomas never mentioned Misty Island ever again for some reason. Which, um, yeah, I guess it was because, you know, you know, Misty Island is an American island, okay? It should be like far away from Sildor. Like not connected to the island search and rescue center. Yeah. Like, Sodor is a British island, you know. And Misty Island is an American one. But I guess that... Yeah, and I also can understand, like, you know, starting with King of the Railway, they just boarded up the tunnel again. Even though they, it, Sir Tom had literally said at the end of Mist, Misty on Rescue that both the tunnel and the rescue center are both op now opened. Yeah. Like, it's unknown to what, what happened, but... And I know some people say Tree Trouble is bad. Yeah, I can understand why Tree Trouble is terrible. Even if we suitable if Thomas could have just said, it's my fault, it's kind of my fault and the workman's fault, man. They forgot to grab up our trees so we didn't get scared off by Gordon. Yeah. Also, what was Gordon doing anyways? Why was he going through that tunnel to Misty Island with the Express? Yeah, and besides, Misty Island is dangerous, besides, okay, because, like, first off, Misty Island has the Shake Shake Bridge, which is by far dangerous, in my opinion, because, like, shakes, you know? Yes, I know that, but, I mean, what if the law, what if Gordon did actually bring the Express to Misty Island and Logs would have just bumped his coaches, kept hitting his coaches? Yeah, I mean, that would be unbelievable. <sighs> I mean, at least we didn't see an episode like that where Gordon took his express to Misty Island. Yeah, it could be worse. But As for Bwaba, I know you probably don't care about that series. I mean, I still think it's okay, not as good, but I still think it's better than, you know, what? The all engines go thing. Yeah, and I did hear some people say Thomas is the star of every single episode. I don't really see that. Because, come on, the show is called Thomas and Friends. Let other characters be the focus. Yeah. Because at least with the model, well, if, if, all the model series and and some of, the C, some of CGI, they let other characters besides Thomas be the lead. Yeah. That's why... That's my one main issue with Bob. Not only is Thomas voiced by a, not an, an annoying kid actor, but he's the main star of every single episode of, of, of the reboot. Yeah. Not to mention that there's zero consistency. <clears throat> like, for example, the bouncing is way, way, way too cartoony. Yeah. At least Waba and Journey Beyond Soldor... They have limitations to their bouncing. I mean, that's Even, a bit weird, but at least it's realistic. 
But I mean, some of their animations, if some of their movements are not that realistic. Because, like I said, isn't it, even though it's kind of cool, like even though it's, don't you think this is unrealistic when Cranky freaks out when he saw Carly tipping over and he his body movements were way too not realistic and he tried to save her from drowning? Yeah, I thought it was realist, unrealistic. And have you seen the episode Thomas's Animal Arc from season twenty two? I think it's season twenty two. Thomas's Animal Arc. Yeah, I'm sure it's probably worse. How do you think it's worse? Like you know, seeing. Oh. You think it's like you think it's annoying with animals being in Tidmouth sheds because you know, like the animal park was was being shut down or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Or okay, I would say. Well. I could understand that, but yeah, and also like, wouldn't it be cool if they just they just put the episode counting on Nia as like as the premiere of season twenty two? That way they should they could really put her on a trial to see if she's really ready to join the main cast, and and Gordon could happily agree with that. Yeah, and then Gordon would be like, "Oh, the indignity." Yeah, and also like, did you know that I hate the montages in Gordon? In Forever and Ever, where Gordon acts like a stupid child. Yeah, it's like Gordon's worst episode ever. Yeah, that's why we didn't include it on the fan-made Best of Gordon release at all. Yeah. In Gordon gets the giggles, on the other hand. <sighs> that one, I could... I do not see the point of it. I, it's just ridiculous. I mean, Gordon is can be dignified. I, I can get that. Yeah. And also, um, what else? So another thing I did find weird is that, you know, you know, in season 22, the models, like the CGI models remain the same, just like in seasons 13 to 21, but with the bouncing. Yeah. Well, in season 23, they did change it a bit. Like the bouncing is still used, but at least it's not too cartoony. But also, they did change the arrangements of the engines. Like, they were, they have additional parts to it. Which I actually kind of think... Which, yeah, I guess it makes sense. Since the engines are meant to be taken as realistic as possible. I mean, I think, like... Which one of you these would you have to pick as your favorite? Even though Season 23, they, yes, they added rivets to the engines. Which one would you think are your favorites? I think I like the ones from season 23 to 24 because they look very realistic. Like, I mean, don't you like the additional parts on, like, Thomas, Percy, or maybe James? And all or... the other engines? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I think I like that. I think I like that. Actually. Also, did you... But also, did you know that Heart of Gold is probably Toby's best episode in the Bubba series? Yeah, definitely without a doubt. Definitely an improvement on. I don't know which Toby episode was worse. I'm pretty sure Signals Crossed was the worst Toby episode of all. Of the Brenner series, at least. But I think, but at least in Toby's new friend from season 20, he's he's kind of in character. Yeah. And what about the truth about Toby? It's semi-okay, but I know it's the similar situation as Toby's special surprise from season 12. Like, you know, yeah. But yeah, you, what did and you know, Sir Topham Hat was like, like in the truth of about Toby. Now, whoever is caused, whoever started this rumor that Toby is going to be scrapped, caused a lot of confusion and even some delays. Which, yeah, confusion makes. I think confusion makes a lot more sense, and delay sort of. I would say mostly confusion. Confusion is a lot more sensible. Yeah, but like I said, I think even though I hate the Bubba series that much, I think Heart of Gold is probably the best time Toby got to shine the best. Yeah. You know, to be honest, even though Bubba was the star of Thomas's downfall again, to be honest, if every single episode of Thomas of Friends focused on Thomas going around the world, I would have been very disappointed. Yeah, because unfortunately they had to make one with him going around the world in the series after the movie, because for some reason, the one continent he forgot to visit in the Blubba movie was Australia. That's yeah. why they, for some reason, had to make him go around the world again in seasons 23 through 24. At least, you know, 
But yeah, to be honest, at least at least some of the episodes managed to focus on other characters. But to be honest, if if I could think of maybe which season I think is the best for the Boba series, I'd say season 24 is the best because um, most of the episodes, well, maybe a few of them do focus on international ones. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can say that. But did you know that this episode of season twenty-four called Thomas's Fuzzy Friend? I think where this Thomas has to look after a dog. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cute. Despite, like, I think there's a there's. I think they did they did censor out that gross part where the dog does this on James. I think what was the line James said in Thomas's Fuzzy Friend when the dog just did this on him? I can't remember. Because man, I, I can tell you it's even more gross. Like you know, like. I mean, even though they they don't see it, they just don't show it on screen because you know they don't want it to be interfering to kids because they think it's kind of gross. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I found it weird. Oh yeah, and I just also think I saw this comment stream. It says Hunter Arthur C. Wickle says, "By the way, Movie Game Over ninety eight, he's talking to you. I missed your stream yesterday. Oh yeah." I mean, I can, I'm, I can, I, it's okay. I know Hunter, I'll just tell Hunter later saying, I'm, it's okay. Oh, that's what BTW does stand for, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah. But I think, mind if I ask you this, did you know that there, I think, didn't you watch this Caillou episode where they went to the beach, but for some reason Caillou did scrape one of his parts of his body and he got, and he started to cry really hard. What season was that? Season one or two? Or I think I don't know. I'll have to look at one where they go to the beach and Caillou sprung his. I think he hurt his knee and then he started crying really hard. Oh god, that's that's gotta hurt. Is it like he he tripped? But I think he should have just learned. He should have gone being very careful. Are you talking about? Wasn't it season four? I really do not know. I'll have to look. Like I said, I don't even care for Caillou that much anymore. Are you talking about when, when Caillou was playing around the grass and he like ripped and he like scraped his knee or something? Don't you mean that? No, I'm talking about the one where they go to the beach, but Caillou actually hit hurt his knee on something. Huh? Do you think? Hold on, let me see that. I'm gonna have to. Was it Caillou goes to the beach or something? Like it was either. Think... Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Like I said, I just don't care for Caillou anymore. But. Yeah, sometimes I don't care about that either, and I'm glad. And I think I'm sort of glad that it got taken out of PBS Kids two years ago. But it's unfortunately going to be coming with a reboot, which sucks because I'm not. Wait, pleased the to... reboot? Yeah, it says it's supposed to come out. I just don't know if it just released now or if it's supposed to release very soon. Yeah, I'm gonna see this real quick. So. Caillou goes to the beach, I think. I think so. Oh, Caillou at the beach. Okay, there we go. That's the one. Okay, it's, okay. That's it's at the beach. Hold on a second. Give me a second. I'm going to have to mute this because copyright.
Um, movie game move ninety eight. Um, uh-huh. Coyote at the beach. I-, I don't think that was the episode, or oh maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to. I think there might be another one. Let me check. There might be hmm. another Caillou episode or something. Okay. I don't know. I'll have to see it. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Well, I was going to ask you something, but go ahead and look through the thing first. Then I'll ask the thing. Okay, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that Caillou episode either. There, like, there was one that Caillou and his family go to the beach again. Except that episode, I think it was Try Try Again, where Caillou and his family go to the beach. Okay. It wasn't that episode. I don't think neither. It wasn't any of those episodes, anyways. <sighs> okay, but, but, but I do I... know the one time Caillou scrapes his knee was uh, the season four episode. I can't remember. But it was the only time Caillou cried in season four, okay? I mean, his crying was not as annoying as his one from seasons one and two, okay? Yeah, but but now if I might ask you this. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know you think the Thomas Person the Squeak one where the engines where Gordon calls Percy dirty Percy is more funnier than than the Baldwin US version, the Michelangelo's UK one. Yeah, one. Well, it, you know how, because I know like this is another one where Alec Baldwin's narration could be poor, but Angela's can be funnier. Yeah, but there are times and Brandon's. There are times that Michael. Uh, there are times that uh, Baldwin's narration in season six was terrible, but at times it's funny. One I example mean- is you know. One example is the season six episode Jack jumps in, where his impression for Alfie is funny. Yeah, like, but... more dirt means more fun. I'm Alfie. And then when he calls out Max, <laughs> so that's Max," said Jack. Thomas was right. He is trouble. So that's Max. Thomas was right. <laughs> he is trouble. He... To be honest, I think season six was when they started to have better morals. Well, at least it's the a sequel episode to Jack Jim's in a friend in need, where he was scared he was gonna get get told off by Miss Jenny again, but Miss Jenny was actually pleased. Yeah, like season, like season, like the Jack jumps in has a good moral about safety first. Well, did you know that the difference because. You know how Baldwin he said in that one when he when Miss Jenny speaks of kind of severely to Jack, he Baldwin says safety first means you don't jump in where you don't belong, but Angela he says safety first means you don't rush in where you don't belong. Yeah, but luckily, did you know that in a friend and need both Angela and Baldwin they do say the same one: don't jump in where you don't belong. Yeah, like I, I can do the Angela one: don't jump in where you don't belong. And like Barbal, he goes, "Don't jump in where you don't belong." And like also, like, I and also I can tell this portion, like you know when, uh, oh yeah, when Kelly comes calls out, "Hold on, Jack." But also, like how in Scaredy Engines from season six, like you know how even though some people say Balbin's narration is boring. I think his echo is in that one is is may, maybe superior as Angelus's, don't you think? Yeah, superior definitely, and also not to mention, you know the song "Little Engines," which is seen on the Percy's Chocolate Crunch. There is a Mike and Ju- there is a version with Michael Donnell singing in that one, which I think I like that version a lot better. Oh, like, not like the one with, ch- with children singing it? Yeah, but it's really rare, though. Yeah, but you can see it on YouTube. I mean, I'll have to listen to it one of these days to see if it's as good as the, the children singing it. Because, you know... Because the way you can yeah. see... I was, like, saying, who's that voice in the background singing along with the children? Is that Mike or Junior? It's Mike. Mike O'Donnell. Oh, okay. Like, that song you- makes me think... 
Like that song makes me think about my graduation or something. You know, after my graduation. The Little Engine song of Thomas? Like before the song Little Engines, okay? Okay. Like the piano is playing and then there's a lot of excitement to it afterwards. Okay. Yeah. See? And, but and not to that... mention... Oh, one more thing, by the way. There's more. Um, you know the song Little Engine is from season six, right? Yeah. Well, even though it's from... Even the song is from season six, most of the scenes that they show are from seasons three to five. And they show one scene from season six. I mean, come on. You could have shown at least... You could have shown at least, like... Oh, Thomas F. Wiggles wants to join. Yeah, I guess they could be a substitute for the others. Sure. Oh, hey, Thomas F. Wiggles fan. Welcome to my stream. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks, Thomas and PBS Program Breaker. Oh, no problem. <laughs> so what y'all talking about? Oh, we're oh. just talking about Thomas content. We were just and talking about the song Little Engines. You know, that there's two variations of it, apparently. So the one version is the one with the children singing, which is seen on Percy's Chocolate Crunch, which I think I remember I used to have it. And the other one is the one sung by Michael Donnell, which I think I like that version a lot better than the children one. Oops. Oops. Oh, did you guys hear it? Honest, I always found the children singing very ugly. Yeah. I mean, it got worse in season six, I would say. Yeah. And I was going to tell Thomas F. Wheels fan, ask some, something cool to Thomas F. Wheels fan, Thomas and P.S. Program Breaker. Uh -huh. Did you guys know Thomas F. Wiggles fan? I just I just got the Wiggles DVD lot off of eBay that comes with Toot Toot and Wiggle Bay. Isn't it exciting? Yeah. I'm gonna be getting. I'm gonna be. Yes, I'll now I'll be doing my D Wiggles DVD collection stream soon. Yeah, and does anyone watch? Oh. I know this may sound a bit off topic, but does anyone watch Between the Lions? Somehow I think I'm familiar with it, but I'm not sure. Okay, because has anyone ever heard the character announcer bunny? Nope. I've I've heard of him. Oh God! Can I tell you, announcer bunny used to scare me as a little child. I mean, season nine was when he scared me. Like the ears are so floppy. God, that scares me a lot. Hmm. I may need to look for long. Yeah, yeah. You're probably gonna have to look it up. <laughs> What's his um, name? Huh? What's his name? Announcer Bunny, Between the Lions. Hmm. Between the Lions was another show I happened to enjoy. I mean, it originally broadcasted in 2000. And, yeah. Definitely recommend watching it alongside... Yeah. Huh? Is it this guy? Um... Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the one. That's the character. But I think the character so scared horrible. me. Yeah, but I think it gets. But the character gets worse in season nine when, God, that ears used to scare me a lot. I don't know, <laughs> man. Sorry. Oh yeah, you're good. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you guys got to join my stream. It's great. <laughs> I feel good too. So yeah. <laughs> So, moving game over 98. Mm -hmm. So, once you call, so do you have your copies of Toot Toot and Wiggle Bay right now, or is it still? They're coming. Still They're arriving. They're arriving soon. Yeah. Oh, oh hey, movie, hey, movie game over 98. Um, you, you want to tell Tom? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Do you know what's something cool that occurred today? What's up? What's up? We recently got the Wiggles Rock and Roll Preschool DVD, which should be coming soon. Well, that's oh. good to hear. Oh, wow, that's great. Hey, that movie game 98. Um, sorry. Yes, sorry. sir. Sorry. Yeah. You want to tell Thomas F. Wiggles fan the bad news of what I'm going to have to include in my fan-made Tom's releases? Oh, yeah. Did you know that Thomas and Peter's program breaker is going to be including something, unfortunately, you guys all have to look at? But yeah. even though he, he was just kidding with me. Because it's April, it's April Fool's Day today. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'll tell, I'll tell you guys. He was gonna say he was gonna include the Thomas reboot, All Engines Go, and the Bob the Builder reboot, but he then he said April Fool's. It's just a joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't believe I just fell for that when you guys just said that. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> I I know. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> There's always next year. Yeah. Though it's true, I'm going to have to include the reboot, really. <sighs> oh, well. The reboot yeah, is... I, I really do have to include the reboot. I'm not kidding. I have to. Did you know that Anthony's retiring? Uh, did you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm not kidding. I have to include the reboot. Yeah, are we still talking about those fans? Um, I do have to include the reboot to be honest, because you know it's canon it's to the original movie show, movie according movie. to some people saying that. Wait. April Fools again. <laughs> Actually, I did not fall for that. Oh, I oh. thank you too. <laughs> hey guys. Yeah, sorry. He's retiring. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, he is don't... retiring? Gr April Fools! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty good <laughs> April Fools joke. Actually, even I fell for that. Wow, Thomas, oh. you, are, you are a fooler. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. It's like, I was doing a... I was doing some kind of like joke videos today. Got Thomas and PS Program Breaker. I was doing some joke videos saying, "I'm doing the opening to Dragon Tales, opening and closing to Adventures in Dragonland DVD." But I realized, oh no, I don't. I don't need to do it the same way again. I already did it, opening and closing separately years back. So I just did an opening and closing, but in reverse. Oh yeah, you did. Was that supposed to be an April Fool's joke? Yeah, I was. I'll t I'll give one. I'm doing an opening to Wiggles. No. Dragon Tales Adventures in Dragonland DVD again. Yeah. April Fools, I'm not. <laughs> I just, I just, yeah. I just did it. An I just did another version where I included both the opening and the closing, but did it backwards. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty. That was a pretty good joke, by the way. Also, I'm sure you guys saw my community post. Yeah, I did say April Fools because I wanted to save everything for the stream. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. Yeah, and I and well. Even though I didn't get Tom F. Wiggles fan really good, but I did get Movie Game Lover 98 pretty good, didn't I? <laughs> yep. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry I rubbed it in. <laughs> it's No, it's fine. Yeah. 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 But don't worry. I'm. Don't worry. Whenever I do a release, I'm never going to include the reboot. Trust me. Yeah. The reboot was worse than the CGI. The CGI yeah. was good. Oh, Bob the Builder, or I'm talking about Thomas and Friends, the 2009 yeah. CGI one. Yeah, although to be honest, I didn't think it was too bad. Well, okay, seasons 13 more to the, 16 were more, bad. More the one from the more the original Thomas. The original Thomas. They yeah, started off the with models like originally. Yeah. They started off with models originally, but then in 2008, Hidden Entertainment decided to have a Hidden Entertainment decided to combine CGI faces with the models. I mean, that's so creepy. Not to mention that at the end of Does anyone have the release um well, if you guys watched Saved You, which god, I hate that episode because of how idiotic Thomas is. And I have to agree with some people with that one. That Thomas is such an idiot in that one. God. Which episode were you mentioning? It was the season twelve episode "Saved You." It, it was. It's seen on. I think it was seen on Railway Friends two thousand nine release. I'm sure. I'm sure, you guys may have it. We don't have that release, but I've heard of that DVD, and it's in the oh, yeah. And I mean, you guys can get the adventure pack of season twelve just to have Railway Friends because I know. I'm yeah. Trying to yeah. Oh, yeah. The 2009 release of Railway Friends. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, My so... My favorite release with Thomas with the CGI animated one was The Lion of Sodor. The Lion of Sodor, yeah. <laughs> like, Thomas at first thought it was a real lion, but it turns out it was a statue. And, like, the narrator was yeah. like, and now it was covered in sticky syrup Fresh fish and straw. And like Sir Tom, I would say, Thomas, this is a terrible mess. Yeah. 
you know, I wonder how it would feel in Bob the Builder. You know, like I could compare both Bob the Builder and Thompson, for instance. You know, they're both better kid quality shows, you know, at least. I agree. They're both really good shows. Yeah. But Bob the Builder, to me, I think some people find it like the fairly odd parents, you know? Because, you know, Bob the Builder started off really well, but I think it went downhill. And yeah, I think it got, and I think it ended in 2011. So to be honest, I think it would have been nicer if they continued where the series left off. Like, you know, if they were continuing the series after 2011, I'm pretty sure they could have had an opportunity to bring back old characters such as... Um, I'm pretty sure they would have had a good opportunity to bring back old characters such as Sumzi, which I know she's basically a ripoff of Trix and all that stuff. Somehow I could tell because one, one time I thought... Why does Trix and Bunny look so similar? Yeah. You know, it's a funny. Hey, Thomas and Peter's for Maker. I think I'm going to leave in like eight minutes from the stream. Okay. Hey, Thomas F. Wiggles, you going to stay? Oh, um, wait. Someone's calling us right now. So. Oh, oh okay. Uh, okay, sure. Sure. Okay. See well. you later, Thomas and Pro PBS Program Breaker. See ya, and thanks for joining my stream, by the way. <laughs> of course. Yeah, see ya. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's, let's go back. Let's get back to answer some questions. Let's do some so, questions. So, um, about what I was saying about the song Little Engines, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I like the Michael Donald Jr. Campo, uh, the Michael Donald version with him singing and all, because I think it's much better than the children one. I mean, I can understand that, but I mean, another thing I want to ask you, I know you don't have the, I, did you know that also, do you, have you seen the version of the, of the song Five New Engines in the Shed, even though it would, wouldn't you like it if they just put Spencer and Fergus in Five New Engines in the Shed? Cause like, come on, Hit Entertainment, why didn't you just put Spencer and Fergus on, in Five New Engines in the Shed? Yeah, I think Hit Entertainment had control of Thomas and Friends in 2003, I would say. It was late 2003 because you know see that's when season seven premiered yeah not to and i forgot to mention the song little engines earlier mm -hmm. I, like i said before even though it's from season six they only show one scene from season six i mean come on you could have shown more scenes from season six like for example um i mean you don't have to show most of them but at least maybe show some scenes like most of them because to make it look like it's season six because, look, it's not a season five song. It's a season six song, for God's sake. Yeah. Also, like, did you know that the, something similar, like, it, at least did you know the song The song after that, Down by the Docks, did improve upon that by showing a few season six si scenes in that song? Yeah. Although season, although James and the Really Splendid Engine was the first song. Because at least they showed some deleted scenes of season six in that song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I and, know, like, and also, like, you know, the, might if I count out the season six scenes that appear in the song Down by the Docks? How many? Uh, like, how many season six scenes are in the song Down by the Docks? Yeah, how many? Like, well, after they show the, when the light shines from the crane from the Flying Kipper in season one, that's the only time we see a season... Actually, yeah, I think we see a season. Well, we do see a season. Uh, yeah, I think that one of the season six songs, we also have a season one footage. Yeah. And James Bond Splendid Engines from Foolish Freight Cars, yeah. a.k.a. Charles and Trucks in the UK. Yeah. Well, in, in the Down by the Docks at the opening shot, they show the crane from the Flying Kipper season one. And I think the, they show. And then the light fades, and then it goes to the deleted scene of No Sleep for Cranky, right? Yeah, they show like well, they show the same scenes as the opening of Bill Super Cranky, but they cut off the scenes where they do don't show Henry and Gordon close up. Yeah, like when they show Henry and Gordon a deleted scene, and it's so, like I think it's an extended deleted scene from No Sleep for Cranky, and then they show the figures bouncing around and some scenes from Salty Secret. And, yeah, and, and another one from No Sleep for Cranky, and then another scene from from Salty Secret, another one from Gordon takes a tumble, and they show. And then they show a scene from when he drops the pipes from at the end of No Sleep for Cranky. Yeah. Also, um, 
Promise me you won't give me hate. Promise me you won't give me hate, okay? I I'm pretty sure I won't. I I I'll just. I don't know why, but for some reason, when I was little, I mostly was. I used to like like watching all of the Steam Team series. Like I like watching seasons eight through twelve of Thomas and Friends when I was little. I mean, I was probably the same as you because I didn't find out a way to watch the classic series of Thomas on TV rather than just them reusing season six and seven episodes. Seasons not eight and nine. Yeah, but nowadays I like watching old Thomas, and yes, that means um. I like seasons one to seven the best, but I do think the it, I do think maybe all aboard the Steam Team series was okay. I mean, the writing did get a bit boring, but at least they don't have well. At least not all of them have a three strikes formula. Like season eight here, like seasons eight to nine, at least they don't well. Sharon Miller did started become a write did write some episodes in season nine, but there wasn't any three strikes formula though. At least. That, I mean, I know Thomas's day off is an exception. Oh, three strikes. It doesn't have a three strikes format because all because I know Dennis keeps trying to, to please make Thomas help him because he's just too lazy to do it himself. Yeah, I mean there are some three strikes, but they were done really well. I mean I didn't think the three strikes wasn't that bad in season nine, but I think it gets worse in season ten. Like, season um, 10 is when the characters really acted more like idiots here. Yeah, and also, the, even if they just edit the scene from Edward Strikes Out, which I know you hate that episode, which is a, a correction. Yeah. But did you know that it would be funny if they did edit it this, but put James's angry face on Edward's model? Kind of like they used, put James's sad face on Edward's model and Edward helps out? Yeah, I feel like it could have worked better with, um... I feel like it could have worked better with James or something. Yeah. And you know when Edward started to act out of character in Thomas and the New Engine, which I know a lot of people hate that episode. But I find it to be m mediocre. Yeah, I can see that. But yeah, here, I think I'll ask one more question, Thomas, and I'm going to leave it. Scott, yeah. I got one more. So yeah, I think one more question I will ask. And then I'll end the stream once you leave. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so uh, one more question I'll ask. Do you, uh -huh. do you, I think, like, I know since I know that I... Did you know that I watched this one particular... Oh, what was it? I, oh, now I just can't even think off the top of my head. I, I Actually, here's one. I think that in the one episode of Season 8, did you know that there's a difference when Sir Tom Matt tells off Henry, what are you doing, Henry and Henry in the Wishing Tree from Season 8? The UK and the US? Yes, but like you, you know, like the one Sir Tom Matt asks, "What are you doing, Henry? You are causing confusion and delay." Do you think Angela does it more harsh, to, or does Brandon still do it more harshly? I don't know. I feel like maybe neither of them sound harsh. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and leave Thomas. It's eight twenty-five. So thanks for uh, having me on I'll the hold stream. Hold on. Yeah, I'll see you. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. This is me, over and out.